I just received an email from NVIDIA's public relations from Ali. And Ali mentioned the video that we did on the NVIDIA RTX Pro 6000, where we had a broken PCIe board and we are not able to source another board so we can fix the video card for the customer. And in that video, I also mentioned the customer who came in with the 5090 FE, where the PCIe board, where it connects with the main board, you know how the card is modular, you have three boards inside the FE video card, the display board, the PCIe board, and the main board. Now, the PCIe board connects with the main board via a connector. Customer replaced fans with a water block, and he ended up damaging that connector where the PCIe board connects with the main board. I was not able to source that board. Customer called NVIDIA, and he told them, I replaced fans with a water block, and I damaged the connector. It's my fault, but I need that connector because the video card is now at a shop, and they need the connector to fix the cart. I do not want to lose the card. I paid a lot of money. Going back and forth, he mentioned the video I did on the 5090 FE on his video card. NVIDIA escalated the ticket and they offered to send him a replacement. They told him to send the card back and we're going to send you a replacement. The customer reached out to me yesterday and he said that he already sent the card. The card has been with NVIDIA for a week. And he called them. They told him, we do not have any information as of yet. Maybe it takes, maybe it's a process. It takes a bit longer for them to process and ship him another one. And I told the customer to keep me posted. If they send you the card or do not send you the card, I want you to keep me posted. Now, I posted another video about the RTX Pro 6000, a $10,000 card where that card belongs to a high profile YouTuber. In the last video, I said 40 million followers around 40 million followers. The card was transported in a desktop and the PCIe board ended up breaking in half. I showed it in the video I posted how the PCIe board is broken. Okay, simple fix. I buy another board, replace the board, and we can save a $10,000 card from being a paperweight. But the thing is we cannot buy another board. NVIDIA does not offer a replacement board. And I went over why is the card modular if we are not able to replace the bits and pieces of the card? If NVIDIA made the card modular so that if the PCIe board broke, we can go and buy another board and replace it, that would be amazing, that would be awesome. But that's not the case. I'm talking from a repairability point of view. I mentioned in the right to repair video that a company who makes any specific device, they do not have to supply you with parts. It's their decision whether they want to supply you with a part or not supply you with a part. It's their decision if they want to give you schematics, board view diagrams, or if they do not want to give you schematics and board view diagrams. They spent a lot of money making those schematics and you, at the comfort of your own chair, you want access to those diagrams. It does not work that way. What we can do, some people wrote in the right to repair video I did. Are you against right to repair? Who said I'm against right to repair? I'm realistic, I'm practical, and I see things from a business perspective. I'm realistic. I do not live in la-la land and imagine things that will never happen. If we have access to parts, that's amazing. If we have access to schematics, that's amazing. I'm in the repair business. I would benefit also. But at the same time, I'm being realistic. You cannot force a company to provide you with parts or schematics and complain all day long. How long has the right to repair movement been going on? What has changed in the real world? Louis Rossman asked for donations so he can help support the right to repair movement. He got in a lot of money and what has changed in the real world? He talks about, oh, a bill, finally a bill for right to repair. Yeah, but that bill has not passed. Why do you live in a fantasy world? Nothing that deals with right to repair past. You're not being realistic. I did mention in the right to repair video, all we can do is expose the weakness of that device. We can tell the consumer that that device is not repairable. We can tell the consumer that you cannot buy parts to fix that device. And that consumer can fight with their wallets. They do not buy that device. If a specific printer is using DRM ink, where you have to buy that specific ink from that company, 
You cannot get a third party in cartridge. What do you do? Oh, I'm going to fight for the right to repair. No, you stop buying that printer. You stop buying from that company. That's what you do. Any logical person would be doing this, but people are too weak. iPhone 17 comes out, iPhone 20 comes out, and people are standing in line. They do not care if that device is repairable or not. They do not care if that housing on the iPhone scratches easy or not. They do not care if whatever. They stand in line and they pay $2,000, $3,000, Pro Max, 256 gigs, 512 gigs, and 1 million gig. And they spend a lot of money not caring if that device is fixable or not. What people need to do is relax, chill, wait to see if that device is really worth paying that much money for. Is it repairable? If something happens, phones can break, screens can break. Can I replace the screen on that phone? How much will it be to replace the screen on that phone? Just do your research. Two minutes, three minutes. Somebody said, I cannot be doing research on every item in the market. Well, if that item, if that device is cheap, you do not need to do your research. If you're paying $100 for that device and something happened to it, throw it in the garbage and buy another one. But if you are paying $10,000 for a device, then I would do my research. If you are buying an expensive video card, I would do my research. That's why we are posting the videos. What I do is I go over the device. I tell you it's not repairable. I tell you I cannot source parts. And it's up to you if you want to buy it or not. Rossman also had the latest video. It came out on my feed. He's talking about the Hyundai, the vehicle. Now you cannot replace your own brakes. And he's bitching and whining about how you cannot replace your own brakes on that vehicle. Things are changing. Now you need a special software. You need to pay $2,000 for that software. And do not buy the vehicle. Why are you buying that vehicle? Just stick to your 1990 vehicle and you're all good. Just stick to your 2023 vehicle and you're all good. Why do you need to buy that specific vehicle that you cannot replace the brakes on? Why do you need to buy that vehicle? And some people will still buy that vehicle. Even if you told them that you cannot replace your own brakes, that it will cost that much to replace your own brakes if you want to do it on your own. I never replace my own brakes. I take it to a mechanic and he does it for me. And any mechanic you take it to, I'm sure they're not going to charge you $2,000 to replace the brakes. But if you want to do it yourself and you have to purchase that software, then a lot of people would still do it. Okay? If you do not agree with what they are doing, do not buy the vehicle. And what's going to happen when enough people do not buy that vehicle, then the company will know that they did something wrong and they will not continue with that practice. But people keep buying so what are you going to do? You cannot control everyone. So we went over the 5090 FE. We went over the RTX Pro 6000. I did two videos on the 6000 because we got two of them. One of them had a damaged PCIe board broken in half. And the other one had a damaged connector on the main board where the PCIe board connects with the main board. Just like the 5090 FE. So today I received an email from NVIDIA. They watched the RTX Pro 6000 with the broken PCIe board for that high profile YouTuber. And again, Nvidia acted in a positive manner. That's how you solve problems. You make consumers aware of the weakness of that card and that's gonna affect the company in a negative way. A company like Nvidia did not have to email me. A $5 trillion company did not have to email a small person like me. I'm not gonna affect their business in any way, shape or form but they emailed me because they care about their products. They do not supply you with the board, but they acted in a positive manner, just like they did with the 5090 FE guy where they told him, we're gonna replace the card for you. Nvidia, they can put Apple in the right pocket and Microsoft in their left pocket. And you still have users in the comments, they mention Angridia, like they are greedy. It's a $5 trillion company. They did not become a $5 trillion company just because they are sitting home doing nothing. It took a lot of work, a lot of dedication, and they do not have a competition. If you want to create a video card like them, go ahead and do it. They can charge whatever money they want. And people, some people in the comment, probably kids or whoever, they wrote, who's that stupid idiot that would buy a $10,000 video card? If you need that card, you will buy it. But you as a person who game all day long, a 2080 would be enough for you. 
you would see that paying ten thousand dollars for a video card is insane but that card has a specific purpose a lot of engineering went into that card those cards are breaking and that's why i did the video to show the weaknesses of those cards aside from the performance the card may be the best card in the world but it has a weakness if that card breaks then it's paperweight because we cannot get parts how do we solve this do we solve it with the right to repair and wait 50 years and hope that something will change or should we just let consumers be aware about the weakness of that card and consumers can fight with their wallet they can stop buying that card or they will still buy the card because they need it and there's no competition and you cannot call it monopoly if somebody else want to be in the same business by all means go create your own video cards and compete with nvidia who's stopping you let me read the email that we received from nvidia and this one is coming from nvidia's public relations coming from ali and they also cc'd mark another person the email reads dear northridge fix team we recently saw your video featuring the nvidia rtx 6000 gpu with a damaged pcie board that a customer sent to you we would like to provide a replacement unit to the customer also if the original rtx pro 6000 blackwell server edition gpu can be returned to us we'd like our technical team to help inspect and troubleshoot we can help coordinate the return and just need to know where we should send the replacement unit and the email is coming from Ali Courtney, NVIDIA Enterprise PR, Partner PR. I do not want to show the rest of the information or the email header. NVIDIA is providing a solution just like they did with the 5090 FE customer that we had. What more do you want? It would be nice if we have access to those boards where a person like me would replace that board and give it back to the customer. But if NVIDIA does not want to do it, what can you do? If they are willing to help out the customer by replacing the card for them or inspect and troubleshoot that card, then why do you need me? Why do you need to come to me and spend money if you can mail it over to NVIDIA? It's even better for you. It's the consumer that matters, right? This email from NVIDIA is nothing but awesome. They offered to replace the card for the customer. I'm going to reply back to NVIDIA and I'm going to tell them to send the card over to our shop. I want to make sure that we get the card. The customer who mailed over the 5090 FE did not hear back from NVIDIA yet. They have no information about the card. For this one, I want to make sure that we got the card. I'm going to ask NVIDIA to mail the card over to us, and I'm going to ask the customer to mail the card back to NVIDIA, the broken one, and we'll see how it goes. I will follow up with another video, but I just want you to see it from my point of view. As a realistic guy, a practical guy, a guy that doesn't live in fantasy land, and expect things that will never happen and waste my energy waste my time waste my brain power and waste my life fighting something that's very difficult to pass this is how you fight companies you expose the weakness of that device and people can decide if they want to buy it or if they do not want to buy it some people will still buy it like i said but if the majority would not buy that card even if they just postpone their buying for six months, those companies will lose a lot of money and they will be forced to change. That's how you make a change. John Deere trucks, they are anti-right to repair, so do not buy their truck. If there's competition, go buy from their competition. If there is no competition, how about you make your own trucks? A John Deere truck is not something that's essential for you to live or die. Food is essential, water is essential, a roof over your head is essential, having health care is essential, but a John Deere truck is not essential. Do not buy a $5 million truck and complain, I cannot fix it. Buy warranty. Invest in warranty where John Deere will fix it for you. You do not agree with their terms, do not buy their truck. Why are you buying their truck and then complaining? Same thing with any other machine or device in the market that's my outlook on the right to repair do i support it 100 percent. why would i not support the right to repair but i'm being realistic that's the way i see things you can agree or you can disagree but that's my opinion and in two weeks we had two cards taken care of without any bills being passed 
without any Congress, without any whatever. Just a simple video. And like I said, NVIDIA did not have to email me. Who am I? Next to NVIDIA, a $5 trillion company. They must be doing something right. And that's why people are buying their cards. We're going to end the video right here. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. And I'll see you again in the next video. I'll probably do another video on this very same customer. And I will let you know when we receive the replacement. It seems like at this point, all those high profile customers will start sending their cards over here so we can make videos on them and get them a replacement. Or maybe NVIDIA will just take care of them by the customer communicating directly with NVIDIA. I do not know how things will go. But so far, we have two positive feedback from NVIDIA for those two cards, the 5090 FE and the RTX Pro 6000 Blackwell GPU.